So, I have lower back pain. I've had a chronic back problem for over 10 years now. I struggle with long road trips because my back hurts from sitting for too long. And I also struggle with long distance running. And such is the tale of non-specific lower back pain. Good evening, good morning people of YouTube. My name is Brad Cato and I'm here to tell you to not be afraid of movement. Far too much information circulates the media that demonizes, stigmatizes and condemns certain movements, especially those with pain. So firstly, as a disclaimer, this video is intended to educate about pain and movement. If you have a serious concern, please see a professional. Spinal flexion is not dangerous. Spinal extension is not dangerous. Any movement at all is not inherently dangerous. People create a lot of fear around movement because they refer to the body as being mechanical. But the body is not mechanical, it's biological. The body is robust and it's adaptable. So let me ask you a question. Assuming that you are healthy, does it not make sense that these movements that expose you to dangerous positions aren't in fact the exact movements that will allow your body to adapt to in response to load? Exposing your body to movement causes adaptation. Increasing load will improve strength, thus making you more robust and improving your body's ability to tolerate that specific force or that specific movement. So when Uncle Bob and Uncle Brad tell you that moving the spine in any direction exerts a high amount of force on your intervertebral discs, this is one of the ways to put an extreme amount of stress on your back is when your back is rounded out like this and you're leaning forward. Of course it does. Of course. Of course it does. But is it dangerous? No. You know, if you get a herniated disc, it's a problem. Just by bending forward like this is putting a heck amount of stress on your back. Absolutely would not recommend it. But if you look at the mechanics, when you get to here, particularly right here, there's a tremendous amount of stress on L4, L5, and S1 in the discs involved with it. And good mornings, it's good grief, and it's also good riddance to it. You got, that's one you definitely gotta stop. When I was a person like this in this sure, position, right. and it put a lot of stress on the back also in that right. direction. I just saw someone doing this the other day at the gym. She was arching her back the way it should be, so that was a good thing. But still, you can't do it. But it's, still, it's it's just too much stress on the back. Do you think intervertebral discs can't adapt as well? Ligaments, bone density, cartilage, they all have the ability to adapt and become thicker and stronger, just like muscles can. So remember when I mentioned non-specific lower back pain? Let me explain. The truth is that 90 to 95% of people with low back pain present with what we like to term non-specific low back pain. This means that sometimes we can't really locate the cause. There are no reliable tests for us to assume or even specify the, patho an an the pathoanatomical source of lower back pain in 90 to 95 percent of people who present with it. It is assumed to be of a musculoskeletal origin. It is most likely non-sinister. This means that it will most likely resolve with time and it's not a serious issue. Although I mentioned it may be presumed to be of musculoskeletal origin, we also have to account a whole lot of other factors surrounding the specific person. This involves their social factors, economical values, goals, genetics, lifestyle, and you know, the list goes on. All of these we have to take into account and get a bigger picture of uh, surrounding the patient or surrounding the person and the problem and deal with those accordingly. They may contribute a large amount towards what is causing the pain in the first place. Furthermore, your most effective source of treatment is exercise for non-specific lower back pain. Like I said, most cases resolve with time. 
This can be accelerated or improved upon with activity modification and exercise. Now, only five to 10% of cases with low back pain tend to come from ridiculous sources. This is things like radicular pain, radiculopathies, and spinal stenosis. And less than 1% are more sinister cases like fractures, infections, and cancer. And both of these things can be figured out and recognized through tests and scans, unlike non-specific lower back pain. Anyway, your main takeaway are that exercise and activity are to be encouraged, not feared. The NAS guidelines from the UK suggest that acute bouts of non-specific low back pain usually resolve within two to six weeks, and that we should again encourage normal activity. Any adjuncts like massage and manipulation should be used in conjunction with exercise and not as an intervention or treatment on its own. For chronic low back pain, this means low back pain that persists for six to 12 weeks, even longer, we have even greater evidence to suggest that exercise should be the primary treatment. The research is out there, let me mention a few. In 2013, Schneiderman and Katz published an article in the Journal of Clinical Rehabilitation and found that a simple walking training program was effective for those with chronic low back pain. They took 52 sedentary patients aged 18 to 65, all suffering from chronic low back pain, exposed half of them to a six week walking program and then the other half to a six week strengthening program. And both programs found significant and almost equal improvements to their disability, pain and muscle endurance. An article was published again by the Journal of Clinical Rehabilitation in 2015 titled Exercise Interventions for the Treatment of Chronic Low Back Pain. This was a systematic review and a meta-analysis. They wanted to determine which exercise interventions were the most effective in reducing pain in those with chronic low back pain. They revealed that interventions using exercise significantly reduced pain compared to a control or other treatment group. They found that both strength and resistance exercises or coordination and stabilization exercises had a beneficial effect over other interventions. Also, training with a high load exercise like the deadlift was beneficial, but seemed to work better on those with a lower pain intensity. But we also know from various other studies that exercises that reproduce pain can sometimes still be very beneficial. So if the exercise is tolerable, it should not be feared. The term wear and tear when compared to our bodies is completely wrong. We are not robots. I think it's better to compare our bodies to the rust or corrosion that occurs to iron. That if we avoid movement, things can get worse. Anyway, like I said, don't take this as medical advice if you yourself have a medical issue. But also, don't be afraid to get moving. I know I'm young, but I've also been suffering for low back pain since my early teens. Like I said, for over 10 years. I used to be fearful as I could never figure out the actual cause of the back pain. Certain movements in the gym used to aggravate my pain, like stiff-legged deadlifts or squats. Even now when I attempt long distance running, that seems to aggravate my lower back pain. However, as I began to understand and realize that these things weren't serious or debilitating, I, uh, uh, I eventually began to improve my function with exercise. Pain with the squat or deadlift began to fade away as I continued to expose my body to the load, and I got stronger in the process. I can still run with pain. I recognize that pain most likely isn't harmful, and through mindfulness, I can push through, complete my run, improve with time and become more tolerable to higher intensities or distances and thus the cycle continues. My case is unique to me and it may be very different for you. But the next time that somebody tells you that back extensions are bad for your back, squats are bad for your knees or upright rows are bad for your shoulders, tell them to shove it up their backside. I hope you enjoyed my rant. Please like this video if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Bradley Cato, and thank you for watching. Goodbye.